Hello, my name's Dan. And I'm Dave. Welcome to Ab Abstract? No, Artifact. Oh man, Abstract is a great show on Netflix, by the way. We're gonna teach you how to shuffle a deck of cards. These are also, we should say, a great gateway into cardistry. Oh yeah. We first learned how to shuffle cards before there was cardistry. And some of these shuffles, yeah, could even be considered cardistry. They're flashy, they're For visual, sure. yeah. they're just very stylized. There are two things I, I think we should bring up. The playing cards we'll be using. Okay. Fair. And also, what is this? Oh, what is this nice. thing we this are nice putting mat. our hands on? If this you guys are viewers and fans of Chris Ramsey, you've seen this on almost every one of his show. And this is something we designed and made many years ago, and it has since been a long time bestseller on our personal site, dananddave.com. We call it the magic surface. It's a <laughs> mat to practice shuffles and deals. And I would say if you're a sleight of hand card magician, this is the most important piece of furniture oh, you can sure. have in your yeah. home. This is here, I'll show you guys the bottom. It's and super, this thing is well made. masterfully produced by one of the best carpenters we've ever met in san diego it's handmade yeah. in san diego it it's will last perfection. you a lifetime yeah this has been with me for i don't know when did we start making these over like 10, 10 years, years ago 10 yeah. years ago yeah we're um, gonna use a variety yeah. of decks that we sell on art of play all right i'm excited to open these up i've been itching to open these since we started i could tell <laughs> <laughs> you know what i think we should start pretty basic um, what would you say the most basic shuffle? One-handed exactly. Faro shuffle with a <laughs> no, bridge, I, upside I'm, down bridge. I'm thinking the overhand shuffle. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. that's pretty basic. Just like super simple, but a beautiful classic and thorough. Shuffle. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. That's all it is. Yeah. So this is a great mix of wow. We, we, I think we did that insane. If you're new to this you'll be able to pick this up within five minutes. You're gonna hold the cards in what we call a straddle grip. And what that is, is put your thumb on the back side, wrap your fingers around the front, and then place your index finger along this long side. So that's the grip. And then you're gonna use your thumb, your opposite thumb, to peel off packets of cards. And then those just get placed in your palm and you continue the action over and over and over. Do it a few times. And you're dropping off blocks. You're but peeling I, and well, dropping. You're, well, you're peeling. You're peeling off there blocks. There is an alternate way to do this by dropping off blocks. But you have more control. You have way more control if you peel off blocks with your thumb. And, and what's looks, also nice about this is too, I think you, you can, can mix it up. You can peel off a block and then you can peel off singles. If you really want to mix up a deck of cards, it's best to combine we'll, we'll different, different shuffles and then yeah. you're left with a thoroughly mixed deck. There are some fun variations on this shuffle. Oh yeah, um, show us. Years ago, I I think I must have done this on accident. Honestly. That's usually how we create you know, things. Yeah, most of our stuff that we've created within the, the sleight of hand realm has been on accident. <laughs> but uh, there's this way you can do the shuffle, which adds a nice flourish to it. So you're spinning each packet around. That's cool. 180 degrees. I have never learned this myself because why learn it if he can do it? <laughs> That's how we were able to do twice as much material when we were growing up. <laughs> in this case, you're actually gonna hold the cards in a straddle grip. But you're straddling it with your ring finger. But you're, I'm straddling it with my ring finger. You're... So the grip is like so, just sort of copy what I'm showing on camera. Your thumb's on the back. You've got your middle finger on the front your index finger up here up top, and then your ring finger resting on the bottom side with your little finger right below it. Again, come over with your thumb, peel off a small packet. Mm -hmm. But then this first one's a little tricky because you have no support of another packet. Yes. You have to use your fingers in the back, but then that just okay. spins around. After the first one, it becomes a lot easier because you can just rest that second packet. So you're still peeling just like an overhand shuffle. Yep. It's just... You're and kind then of notice using your ring finger to spin it around. Yep. And notice my right hand. It's creating that circular action to help facilitate the spin. And then it just gets dropped on top of the other packet. That's nice. Yeah. What do you call that? I think I called it 
Revel. Oh, Revel. Revel. Yeah. Yeah. But now we're just calling it a... A variation of a skinny. <laughs> There's also a way to do this with one hand. Ah, is that my cue? I mean, do you do you do this one? I think I can do this one. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, let me see if I can do this one. This one helps if you have a broken in deck of cards, which this is a brand new deck, so... I'm using a brand new deck. No, I broke that one in earlier. <laughs> oh, okay, that's why it feels so nice. <laughs> I honestly thought it came out of the box this way. No, this morning I woke up and opened a bunch of decks and broke them in so they wow. would be nice for the show. You're welcome. He's the fluffer. <laughs> this one takes some skill. Also like, wow, that really stretches your hand. It is like doing card yoga. This one, you're also gonna hold the deck in what's called straddle grip. This is a variation of straddle grip where you're straddling the deck between your first finger or your index finger and your, your little finger and your thumb is centered and your other fingers are on the opposite edge. And the cards are raised at your fingertips like this. When you're ready to begin the shuffle, your thumb is gonna move to the back to join the little finger and then you're gonna peel up a block of cards, pivoting it off like your- a, a big block. Your index finger. Yeah. Yeah, a big block. And that'll give you um, more cards to shuffle with. Okay. So you're peeling that off. You're extending the thumb clockwise. So this, I guess, is a scissor cut, right? Isn't- Yeah. You're rotating your thumb or extending your okay. thumb clockwise. Yeah. And everything's getting pivoted off that index finger in the front. The packets separate a little bit. You can see there's a little bit of separation there. That is a stretch. So that you can clear that top packet. So now the bottom packet is on top and you can come back down on top. Okay. And then your thumb is just kind of kind of like dip down and drop. Oh, so we're dropping packets. You're in dropping thing. packets. Okay. So in the overhand shuffle, we were peeling packets off with our thumb. Yeah. Now we're dropping. That's why this one's drop. a little more messy. Takes a little bit more control. Yeah. It's not as controlled. It can get messy, but with practice, you can drop you can those get, evenly one at a time. You can get consistent drops and the drops will stay together, keeping all the cards in alignment. Yeah. You have to practice for speed. Yeah. You're never going to be the fastest runner if you just <laughs> walk around the track. Try to be the best walker. <laughs> that is um, the overhand shuffle with a couple variations. Hope you guys like that. One of the things we wanted to touch on before we move on are the cards. So I'm using the Vertigo playing cards. This was a collaboration we put out with Fulton Playing Card Company, our good friend Brad Fulton. I've always loved this movie poster. We used to have it hanging on our wall yeah. in college. And Fulton um, and I had a lot of fun um, for a few different Sundays piecing these designs together, heavily every... inspired by the amazing Saul Bass. Obviously yeah. this is uh, yeah. the work of Saul Bass, legendary graphic designer in the film industry and title designer, worked on a number of Hitchcock films yeah. such as Vertigo. But if you check out the court cards, for example, yes, they are reminiscent as close as we could get with sticking to the confines of a playing card composition to the movie posters. Yeah. They're great. It's Beautifully awesome. letterpress printed box. So you can feel the texture of this intricate design. It's really cool. And then I am using a super fun deck that we collaborated with a few years ago on the Danish microbrewery McKellar. Um, these were designed by Keith Shore, who's an amazing designer and has this really fun and playful cartoony style. Yeah. And I just love these. It's so different than a lot of the more intricate decks out there. So here's the back design. It's a subtle one way back. And then of course, really fun face cards. The face cards are all different. And these are characters, Henry and Sally, um, which show up in all of the beers branding. Super cool. It's pretty good beer too. Yeah. I don't like beer, but <laughs> I think they're just quite nice. It's good. All right, so for this, we're gonna pick out two more decks from our collection. What should we get? Ooh, ramen. I'll take those. That's a good one. Ooh, it's I'm hungry. And Smoky Bear, I love these. 
two very vintage looking decks of playing cards. This is a deck we put out last year for mystery decks. Yeah. And we recently released them by themselves and they're almost sold out. So we actually have a reprint in order. It's a tiger. <laughs> These are awesome. Yeah, that's, that's warrior. a great deck. And then I'm gonna be using the Smokey Bear, the official Smokey Bear playing cards. Um, this is a deck we put out a couple years ago and it's since become one of our best sellers and we now have produced it in many different colorways. The Riffle Shuffle, this is yeah. a iconic, classic, quintessential shuffle. shuffle. And it can also be done on the table, of course. So since we have this lovely surface. You're just riffling the edges of the cards together. But we're gonna start with the In The Hands. You know what? I see so many people do the shuffle in the weirdest ways possible. You know, it's like, what do you mean? It's always like, you know, it's, it's tricky. I think and that's what we want to go over is how you know, to get into it. They bend the cards too much on the bridge, how to find um, that control. They, they can't seem to figure out like, it's how, okay. They haven't watched no, our video. I know, but, <laughs> oh, there we go. Pack it in each hand. <laughs> um, but hopefully with some of our tips, you guys will be able to properly, um, do a riffle shuffle or teach someone that is struggling out there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what we encourage is everything you learn here, pass it on. The proper way to do a riffle shuffle. This is one of those things that just works better with a slightly broken in deck, especially if you're just learning this for the first time. Best way we found to break in a deck of cards is to is riffle, shuffle. riffle shuffling. <laughs> Start with the cards in this grip. This is what we call full grip, I think, or, or end grip. Or end grip. Yeah. Um, thumb on the back. And for this, you wanna wrap your fingers around- Underneath. Under the deck. And you're almost pinching the yeah, cards. Yeah, and then right? you're gonna apply pressure with that index finger on top, and you're almost gonna pinch the deck between you those sh four fingers. You should be able to let go of yeah, the you cards wanna, with your thumb. You want a really firm grip is just take your thumb and try to riffle the cards from the bottom to the top. You might not be able to do it right away. And it might seem like you're making no progress for the next several minutes, but then all of a sudden something will click. You're gonna riffle half the cards, okay? And then you're gonna come over with your other hand using the same grip. Clipping or pinching the or cards. Or flipping over a page in a book, but you're flipping over an entire packet. Yeah. So your fingers go on that opposite end of the deck, mm -hmm. and then your index finger goes on top. And then notice my my index fingers in my right hand are gonna, you, are gonna flip that packet up. They help tilt it up. Exactly. Until your thumb can grip it. Yep. And now you have a mirrored position of two packets. Yeah, the grip is identical. Exactly. Gotcha. And then again, you're just gonna ripple like this. And then, and then hold the cards uh, parallel to the floor, I would say. Yeah, more or less. And then bend those packets back with your thumb and then just ripple them off and they're gonna weave together. So to recap, we have our grip, we're gonna riffle. We're gonna flip that bottom packet over into the other hand. So now you have the same grip in both hands. Mm -hmm. You're gonna riffle them together. Keep in mind that you're continuing to pinch those packets between those fingers. Place your thumbs on top of the deck or on top of the two packets mm -hmm. and then squeeze tight and then bend both packets. And then in one quick action, release the pressure. From your fingers. From your fingers. And by just releasing the pressure, the separate hands. the hands ever so slightly. Once your thumbs are on top, to move your index oh, fingers yes. yeah. around to the edges of the deck you or to the front of the you deck. You can extend them or move them to the front. Yeah. That just gives you a little bit more support. Because oftentimes, even for us, we've been shuffling like this for a couple decades, there's a chance the cards will spring out, mm -hmm. spring forward and fall on the ground. And so by having your index fingers at the front edge, that just prevents the cards from springing forward. You can do the shuffle upside down. There's our upside down riffle shuffle. No, but I was, there's a version of the shuffle. That's cool. So you're riffling with your middle fingers and then you're bridging upside down. Do you remember down. where you first saw it? 
I think he was a magician. His name was, he went by the name of Paul David. Oh, that's right. And he used to perform Universal, Universal Studios, Studios in yeah. Hollywood. He performed at this restaurant called Wizards. It was a magic bar. And he was a phenomenal magician that blew our mind. Great with magician. Amazing but visual even, magic. Even better sleight of hand. You're going to re grip the cards. You're going to basically drop the cards into your palm. It's just your middle finger applying the pressure. And in the same way we riffle the cards with our thumb, we're going to riffle the cards with our middle finger. All of my fingers go underneath the cards for support. Okay. And then I'm pushing down. I'm bending the cards in this reverse bridge. Right. And then in the same way, you just sort of relax the hands by separating them a little bit, allowing the cards to come together to bridge. I'm guessing this is how it feels for a novice learning the regular bridge for the first time. <laughs> well, there you go. The quality of your riffle will improve the quality of the bridge. And it, with enough practice, it is possible to do a perfect riffle shuffle. And you can hear it. Like when you shuffle them perfectly, you know right away you hit it because it sounds good, it feels good, it smells good, it tastes good. <laughs> Since we have this nice surface, uh, we thought we'd also show you guys how to do the riffle shuffle on the table. On the table which might make more sense for card games. Yeah, and you're gonna split the cards in half. From here, you're gonna place your hands on top of each packet, mirroring one another. So you have your fingers at the front side, your index finger on top, and your thumbs at the back. And very similar to the in the hands method, you're gonna lift up with your thumbs and riffle the cards onto the table. Mm. You're gonna use your index fingers on top to push down and apply pressure for you to get the cards to riffle off evenly and consistently. Bring the packets together, do that, and they will weave together. And you can push them together like this, or you can also do a table nice. bridge, wow, which is fancy. really fun. To do that, so we've got our shuffle. From here, you're going to move the cards together like this. You still have your hands on all the sides, but notice my little fingers are on the short sides. And now what's gonna happen, you're gonna move your index fingers to the front and you're gonna squeeze the back with your thumb and the front with your fingers. So you're squeezing the packet like this together, okay? But you still have your little fingers on the short sides. And then when you do that, you're gonna lift up. And when you lift up, move your index fingers, or sorry, move your little fingers close together. So you're gonna bow this entire two packet block. Just like a bridge. Exactly. You're squeezing the cards, yeah. just like you would in the hands. And then just release some of the tension with your thumb and fingers. And you hear, can hear it yeah. cascade down. Unlike, I would say, the in the hands riffle shuffle. Yeah. Your This is where you, the hands slightly separate to bridge the cards. This is more about the thumbs releasing pressure, right? Yeah. So you can hold that tension and keep the bridge and then when you're ready, sort of move your fingers away from each other or move your little fingers away from each other. And that's going to release some of the tension. And the cards will just naturally in almost in automatic fashion cascade down. Very cool. So, yeah. We should mention we learned this from Steve Forty. Oh, yeah. Who we mentioned earlier. He's the icon of casino gaming protection and sleight of hand. So you can pick up the packet like this and you can combine what you learn yeah. in the hands riffle. Exactly. But when you cut, I would say cut a third of the cards on top and then shuffle. Because again, if you're just cutting half, it's not doing it. You're just recycling the cards back into each other in the same spot. So cut a third, shuffle, cut a small third, shuffle. And, and later we'll talk about run cuts. But that is a table riffle shuffle. And bridge. I think we're uh, into the pharaoh shuffle. Mm. What is a pharaoh shuffle? It's a perfect shuffle. Why do they call it a pharaoh shuffle? I think it comes from Egypt. No. <laughs> <laughs> Which cards are we using? I'm using the Eames, the classic Starburst Eames. This is the first Eames deck we put out a couple years ago. And, and I'll be using the 
cards that we had made with pentagram. Ooh, and polish These here. These are the just type playing cards. This is edition two. There are two different versions of the just type playing cards. I guess I'll show everyone first what a pharaoh is. And we have the overhead camera for this, but just like that, you can weave all the cards together. Nice. One by one. That's perfect. That's a perfect shuffle. That's a perfect shuffle. The deck is in new deck order. Because what's interesting about a pharaoh shuffle, well, there's actually two types of pharaoh shuffles. There's an in pharaoh and an out pharaoh. Mm. Do you know That's the difference? Technical. Of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> so the easiest way that uh, we learned as kids was an out pharaoh. You can consider the top card and the bottom card, the outermost cards in the deck. So while Pharaoh shuffling, if you keep those cards in their position on top and bottom, that's an out shuffle, right? An in shuffle is burying the top and bottom, top and bottom card into the deck. Yeah. You're so cycling the, them through. The top card would go to the second position and the bottom card would go to the 51st position, so to speak. Right. But what's cool about an out pharaoh is that if you do it eight times, it puts the deck back in new deck order. All right, pressure's on. All right. Can you do eight perfect shuffles? Let's, uh, let's find out. So there's one. This is hard. <laughs> there's two. So you have to cut 26 and 26 perfectly each time. What is that, three? Yeah. That's that's perhaps Four. one of the, the most challenging parts of learning to pharaoh, is consistently cutting Five. exactly half the cards. It really does happen Six. all by itself. So look, I got one more after this because you see the three of spades? Yeah, so, so the three and then next we'll see the two. So, so when he cuts 26. I've got one more pharaoh to do and you can see that's the case because it goes ace, three, five, seven, nine. It's skipping a card. So this is the 26th card. Yeah. That's dead center. So let's square these up and then cut to the two of spades. Of course I screw up on the last that's, one. That's fine. Sometimes you need to correct like yeah. that. And that's eight perfect pharaoh shuffles. Well done. Nice. So there's obviously no point in that if you're no. playing. <laughs> But it's cool. That's a fun stunt. I just wanted show to show them friends. that I was really good at pharaoh shuffling. <laughs> no, I hope so. I mean, <laughs> we've been doing this doing long enough. enough. Yeah. If you accidentally started with an in pharaoh, you'd have to do 52 shuffles to get it back to the first position. We're going to split the cards in half, close to half as possible, because that in and of itself is a knacky thing to do to cut 26 cards. Yeah. Um, so just grab a packet close to half as possible. And then at first you're gonna butt them together like mm -hmm. this. And I always tell people just to wiggle the cards back and forth and apply pressure. To get the feel for it. Just to get the feel for it. You should be able to get them to weave together fairly quickly. It's not gonna be a perfect weave by any means, but they should weave together. Because when you're just doing this, even if you have a weird grip that's not precise at first, you're just butting those two ends together, move one of them up and down, and then slowly push them together. Mm. Yeah. With a brand new deck, I think it's easier because the cards are perfectly cut and still very sharp on the ends. So they're just gonna want to weave together naturally, honestly. But the way we do it is more controlled in that we're holding the cards fairly tight together and then we're making sure they're aligned and perfectly square and then angling them ever so slightly. So they're they're touching and then I'm gonna move them at an angle. They're almost gonna spring And then in together. one action, they, they just it, they, weave. They spring together. Yeah. So they're not weaving together like this, no, no, no. they're weaving together. Exactly. Like this. So they're touching and then you can see, you can go this way or you can go this way. We'll try this way this time. So they're at an angle, they're at this like peak formation. Mm -hmm. So I'm holding it here and that's what this index finger is for. It's helping to keep those packets together yeah. in this sort of controlled environment. And then I'm pushing, I'm applying tension with both packets. And then in one action, 
I'm gonna just nice. What, what would you even call that? <laughs> I would say they they spring together. They coalesce. Yeah. yeah. When the cards are butted up against one another, they're flush. And it's important to angle them like I just did. If if you have them, you know, going into each other head on, and then you try to push them together, you're and kind think, of creating this wall. They're just not going to want to weave. There's too much friction. There's too much friction. There's too much tension. But if I just angle it ever so slightly. And then push. Continue yeah, to push. it just goes right in. And then, of course, there's the bridge. All these shuffles have to end with the bridge. And to do that, um, similar, but since your hands are in a different position from what we've been learning, you're going to sort of do a modified bridge. So I'm going to come over and grab the center of these two packets between my left hand. Notice my thumb is in the middle of the weave. So that's where the cards are weaved and my thumb goes smack dab in the middle and my three fingers on the bottom and of course my index yes. finger is underneath. I'm gonna come over and you wanna weave these together enough so you might have to push them in a little bit so that your other hand can wrap around like this. So my thumb is in the back, all four fingers in the front and I'm gonna squeeze at the same time I squeeze I'm applying pressure underneath, mm. pushing up with my index finger. And that's just gonna help create this bridge. And then just like before, release some tension by separating the fingers, by separating the thumb and fingers, and they'll mm -hmm. just fall together. fall together. You could also, I'll just briefly mention, do well, it upside down. Of course you could do it upside down. You know, you could also do a, a double bridge. If you do it at the end, the corners, you can spit them out the side and then bridge a second time. You could also do it three times. No, you can't. So the technical term was spit. You spit them out the sides <laughs> yeah. and then you, you do this at an angle and then you can do that again. And can you keep going? I think you can keep going. It does diminish. Yeah, it does get harder. Earlier, we talked about doing pharaoh shuffles um, within flourishes, and this is one of my favorites. This is called Friffle. Nice. I'm yeah, not going to teach this, but you can find a free tutorial, actually, on YouTube from our friend and creator, um, Oliver. It's possible to do this one-handed. No way. So uh, let's see if I can hit this. Ooh, not bad. You know, a few cards are not perfect, but under pressure, under the hot lights. I think there's an exception to perfection. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I promise I can normally get this perfect. It's pretty good. That's really good. It's not bad. We're well, recording course, this live, right? There's like no retakes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's also possible to do an upside down bridge with the one hand. Do you do it? I remember seeing this and it's amazing, but it's really hard. <laughs> oh, someone's been practicing. He's practicing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it is possible to do pharaohs on the table and in many different ways. There's lots There's... of variations of this. So yeah, one of my favorite ways to, to execute a table pharaoh shuffle was something we learned from an old friend who went by the name Rod the Hop. Yeah. Who has sadly passed away, no but longer with us. An incredible mechanic. And that's one of what, the best. Yeah. That's what you call a, a card cheat, I guess. <laughs> so you're going to cut the cards in half and push them together like so. You're going to lift up the outermost ends and form this sort of V shape on the table. And while you do this, you're going to apply tension or pressure towards each packet. And that's going to cause them to coalesce in this sort of automatic fashion. It's very similar to the in the hands pharaoh. Yeah. It's just you're exaggerating that weave by yeah. holding the cards at the edges. This is one of my favorite shuffles, actually. Whoa. With the bridge. Cool. And these are brand new. So like a little just, slippery. There we go. That yeah, feels so good. I can't do that. Very cool. So yeah, you're just splitting in half. The mechanics are more or less the same as uh, 
a feral, and then this feral is something breach. we learned in print from. Um, I think it was in one of Vernon's one Ultimate of Vernon's Secrets of books, Card Magic yeah. or yeah. the Inner Card Trilogy. But I I have not seen anyone else in all of our years practicing sleight of hand do this shuffle as well as Dave does it. Oh, that's a nice so, thing to say. I don't think anyone does it. That's why. <laughs> This is the the butt shuffle. Mm. It was uh, written up by Ed Marlowe. Nice. So yeah, this it kind of looks like a riffle shuffle. What we mean by run cuts or combining cutting sequences with shuffles. So this would be an in the hands run cut called swing cuts. Like consecutive cuts. Consecutive cuts. These are tiny little cuts. Tiny little blocks of cards, but you know, just to give you guys an idea. So you could also do an overhand shuffle combined with a ripple shuffle okay. combined with swing cuts, and then you know, go into a one handed shuffle. The idea is to intermix all of these things to get a thorough mix of the card. So on the table, you would combine a style of run cut with a riffle shuffle like that. So the same idea, you're just mixing shuffles. We've showed you guys quite a bit and just know that there's a lot more out there and we hope we've piqued your curiosity and interest and if we have, definitely go down the rabbit hole because there's a lot to explore. Yeah. We used a lot of decks in this, in in this video. Rooms. I think we should give them all the way. Yeah, there's some great cards and they're broken in by Dave and I, which adds some value, I hope. They have but, a uh, DNA. We're gonna give them all away. Not only that, we're gonna package them inside this really cool playing card ammo canister that we made a long time ago. A long time ago. So per usual, just leave a comment. Any and every comment is eligible for an entry. So uh, we'll randomly pick one and uh, send this out. Good luck. Thank you so much for watching. I think we forgot to shuffle. Oh, we there did. was one. There was one really, it's, it was pretty important. Do uh -huh. you have a deck of cards? Um, yeah, of course I have seven of them. This is a great shuffle. Have you heard of it? It's called 52 card it's pickup. Not yeah, like I said, I have to leave soon, so um, it's okay. I 